Australians consume around 3 million single-serve coffee pods every day. Sadly, many of these end up in landfill. One startup that's trying to change all that through combining specialty coffee with biodegradable pods and the result, cafe quality coffee in your Nespresso machine, minus that guilt. So joining us now from uh, Melbourne, co-founders of Pod and Parcel, Ben and Jai, uh, of course from Melbourne, as we said, uh, they're the coffee capital. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, can you tell us how the business uh, came into life? Yeah, uh, I guess I was really born out of an own frustration. We were working as business consultants a few years ago, back in 2016, and we, obviously working in Melbourne, uh, spoiled for choice of coffee. Uh, we'd go to our favourite cafes during the day, but at night we would still be stuck in, um, in the office. There wasn't really much of a good alternative. There was instant, and we also had a little Nespresso machine. Um, after trying it, we thought, you know, it was pretty cool but we thought we could really improve on the flavor. It wasn't that great. And we also knew that there was quite a bit of um, stigma around coffee pods in the fact that so many of them go to landfill daily in Australia. Um, so we set out from that point to really create a sustainable coffee pod, but also using great local coffee from Melbourne. Right, so, so Pod and Parcel set out with two two points of difference, I guess, the, the environmental factor and that the coffee's going to be better. So are they the two areas in which you're going to beat out the competition? And, and if so, how's that going so far? Uh, absolutely right. Look, uh, fr from, from day one, our goal was to be Australia's most sustainable coffee pod and also the, Australia's best tasting coffee pod. Um, our goal and our vision hasn't changed. Uh, we think we've got the uh, taste wise down the sustainability has a little bit of ways to go but we're making great progress yeah, for sure. it, it, it sounds terrific to me uh, Jai is it um, does that come at a price is it more expensive to do it that way yeah look our pod is more expensive but uh, we don't hide that fact we are a premium product we're at the higher end of the cost for pods but there's definitely a reason for that uh, coffee costs a lot more than the competitions and the sustainability factor the fact that our pods are biodegradable and compostable as well uh, really does come at a price. It's not as cheap as producing other pods out there. But um, as Ben said, we're definitely striving for the best possible pod possible, which is from taste all the way to sustainability. Yeah, talking to a couple of the people around here, they call them coffee snobs, but for me, it's just people who would be happy to spend a little bit extra, guys. Um, now, in terms of Nespresso there, I'm curious as to whether or not you see them as competitor or partner here, because as you say, you use their, their machines, but uh, you're also going up against them in terms of pods. So how do you see that dynamic? Yeah, I mean, uh, like credit to them, they created a generally great product. It's It's you know, uh, barista made really great espresso at a push of a button. Um, unfortunately, I guess fortunately for us, um, unfortunately for them, um, they're still pursuing the aluminium pod perspective. Um, and that's where we see the gap in the opportunity and in the market to really come in um, and provide something that we know that consumers want. They're looking for a more sustainable alternative and, as you said in the intro, something that kind of takes away that guilt. Mm. Sure. I suppose the only other thing I'd ask about Nespresso is that it's a, an enormous company. I'm assuming that they're always trying to make their coffee taste great and they're probably trying to figure out this, this aluminium pods thing. Do you worry at all about them sorting those two things out? Um, from our perspective, not really in terms of the coffee. They're always going to be a kind of super mass product in the fact that they're going to use lower grade coffee just because it's cheaper. Uh, we're on the other end of the scale. We're a smaller company. We're trying to provide the best pod possible. Uh, the only way to do that is to buy really high end specialty coffee that's roasted by specialty coffee roasters. Uh, and it does cost more. They're, I don't think they're ever going to reach it in that kind of area. Um, sustainability wise, they may end up catching up with the rest of the people, but they're a big company that takes a long time for them to make uh, big incremental changes like that. Whereas we're on the ground, we've got our ear to the ground as well, we can mm. move pretty quickly. And as for, the, as for the business side of things, you've been in business for a couple of years now. Um, how have you been funding yourselves? Has it been bootstrapped or have you had to sell some equity? What's been going on? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, at the start, it was definitely bootstrapped. We had no money. It was our credit cards, <laughs> and that was it. 
Um, <laughs> and that was for, I don't know, maybe 18 months. We have recently, in the last 12 months, taken a little bit of investment. Um, we, have, we went through a major rebrand around mid last year. And so uh, it was essentially just to fund that for the minimum um, run requirements. But beyond that, no, it's been profitable from day one. And, you know, we'd like to give it that way. Yeah. It's, it's this kind of, um, the confidence in the brand is really coming through and I suppose that comes uh, when you're, you're dishing out credit cards, things like that. Um, <laughs> now, um, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you've come across in those early days and, and I guess, how did you learn from them? Uh, well, really, there's a lot of challenges in starting a new business for sure, especially when it's not your background as well. Um, a lot of things can go wrong and they tend to, it just depends uh, how you kind of deal with them and you roll with the punches. Um, there's definitely been a few manufacturing issues at the start and things like that that we got past. Um, but kind of some of the other bigger ones. I th funding. Yeah, I think money, <laughs> really. Yeah. Yes, Jeez. of money. course. <laughs> money. It's yeah. always about money. Now, with, reg mm. uh, with Pod and Parcel, what are, what are the big plans for the future? How are you going to grow and expand from here? Yeah, look, uh, really we're thinking about local market domination still. Um, I think there's a lot of work left in the product. Uh, we really want it to get to a stage where the whole package, the whole product from packaging to pod is compostable, incompostable um, at home. And so that's what we're really working towards, um, bringing out a larger range, going for more distribution, hopefully in supermarkets, if you're listening. <laughs> supermarkets. Um, but, you know, it, it's, yeah, it, it's focusing locally and then moving uh, potentially international. For sure. And to add that as well, our uh, goal's always definitely been to be Australia's most sustainable, best tasting coffee pod. And we're definitely most of the way there. Uh, we've still got a bit of ways to go with sustainability, but we're definitely there on the taste front. Yeah, guys, you're making me hate the latte that I had earlier today, even more up here in Sydney. <laughs> but, um, uh, you know, we'll strive for better uh, going forward, of course. Now, um, Ben and Jai from Pod and Parcel, thank you so much for taking us through the business today. No worries, thank you. That's welcome.